Make and Wonder is all about understanding men because when we understand them, we can do best in our relationships to make them work and thrive. And on this episode, we focus on why your man may be looking at other women when with you and what you can do about it. There are things that you can do in a high value way so that he understands what he is doing because you, as the woman in his life, are there to guide him towards the best behavior. Whether we like this or not, it is our given role. And when we take it on, we can best guide things to where we want them to go. And he will love you for doing that. He wants to please you. He wants your guidance in how best to please you. And when you are unhappy with something and you do not voice it in a way that he can understand through understanding him, you hurt yourself. So this episode is all about understanding why your man may be looking at other women and what you can do about it. There are deeper reasons beyond your awareness and what is right in front of you with him sitting there doing his manly stuff and the reasons begin with the letter T. Testosterone is the thing that drives him beyond all others. And if you listen to this full episode, you are going to get a mind-blowing look into what testosterone does and how you can help him deal with it. The first thing we must do in any relationship is seek to understand the other person. And that's what you will get a greater sense of by listening to this brief but powerful episode. I get most of this from Dr. Carol Hooven, who is a researcher and who has written a book about testosterone from Harvard University. She really goes into it in depth and I will also put in the description below how you can find out more about her and find out about her book and read it if you want more on this topic. In the meantime, take advantage of this episode and understanding him like you want him to understand you and you will do yourself and your relationship a great service. He will love you for it. So enjoy this episode on why your man continues to look at other women. Stay till the end for what you can do about it. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. Today's topic I find fascinating. If you've heard me at all, you know that I do because the differences between men and women are very important for us as women to take into account in order to make our relationships thrive, to be the best they can be, to allow us to be happiest, for our men to be happy with us to support us and give us the best of themselves. Foundationally, I use the differences vis-a-vis -vis how we as the caretakers, connectors, and cooperators of our species, and men being more about challenge, conquering, and competition, how we use our abilities 
to connect, cooperate, and caretake, to give all, including children that come from any union between us, the best, the healthiest, the happiest life. So today I wanted to talk about this vis-a-vis how we can get frustrated by men behaving badly, rightfully so, but giving it a context and the reasons why and how we can view men's behavior in an inclusive and understanding way because we can connect the emotional dots is exceedingly helpful in making relationships work and last. Those of you who've read my book, you know I do this to a great degree using the puppy principle, how men bond through making a formal decision to commit and take on the responsibility that they see relationships as being, much like we do when we commit to a puppy or other pet. Today's topic is more along the lines of our brain differences and understanding male behavior so that we can sustain our relationships with men, not impugn them, and embrace our differences. And then, of course, how we can best ameliorate and even to a degree correct behavior that we find everywhere from abhorrent on the scale to mildly irritating. And that, of course, is why a man who is with you, who you know loves you, may keep looking at other women, how his demeanor, his face, his gaze immediately switches when presented with the female form. And I'm going to give you some really interesting information about that, that I know will help you with this and certainly help your relationships, certainly help your relationship, your dating, any dealing with men to some degree. Brain differences. There's been a lot over the years over whether or not there's any real brain differences between men and women, and there are, however small. They've discovered that while humans looking at pictures of the brain, whatever scans they use for that, are not very good given different parts of the brain telling whether or not that tissue or part of the brain is from a male or female subject, AI can very accurately tell in the 90 percentile of telling, high 90 percent. There are these differences largely driven by hormones and how hormones are delivered to us from the time we're in utero through growing, puberty, etc. Especially how testosterone influences male behavior and how we cannot separate a man from his testosterone. I love this topic. I've always been fascinated with it. Anthropologists like Desmond Morris. I recently came across Dr. Carol Hooven, who is the co-director of undergraduate studies, the Department of Human Evolutionary Biology at Harvard University. She is an author of T, the story of testosterone, the hormone that dominates and divides us. Love that title. Her book was published July of 2021. And I love part of what I took from the book, the description in part, since antiquity, from the eunuchs in the royal courts of ancient China to the booming market for elixirs of youth in 19th century Europe, humans have understood that typically masculine behavior depends on testicles, the main source of testosterone in males. Which sex has the highest rates of physical violence, hunger for status, and desire for a high number of sex partners? Just follow the testosterone. But of course, we do live in a society that is not just driven by animal behavior. But I'm going to say that attempting to tame it to a degree where it is level with female behavior, in my belief, is a mistake. A, because it doesn't work very well and really isn't possible. And B, the old adage, be careful what you wish for. Because quite frankly, we as women want our men to be men. And like with everything in the universe, men fall under the law of opposites. With everything good, 
comes something not so good. We want to look at all the good things that men with their higher level of testosterone do for us. And just saying that, I'm sure you have many things in mind that are good about it. Testosterone, however, makes men less able to access emotions except for anger. And interesting to discover, we've all heard of something called roid rage, where men who are on synthetic hormones taking testosterone and other male hormone derivatives for bodybuilding purposes show more anger. And they've discovered that it actually doesn't make men more angry. It just gives them greater and faster access to their anger. But men with higher testosterone levels normally also have higher access to their dopamine. And this is what I wanted to get to today. Dopamine, that's the feel good hormone, but we can also look at it under the lens of likely where the word dope came from. And you may feel many times that your man, when it comes to certain things like the opposite sex, i.e. looking at other women in your presence, acting a fool, being a boy, so to speak, that is driven by his innate form and of course his testosterone. I'm going to give you a very interesting thing that I discovered while listening to Dr. Hooven speak on a podcast. This was so telling. I felt it was so important for you to get it. And she gives a wonderful example of a dream she had that encapsulates it perfectly. This she talked about on Modern Wisdom. That's the name of the podcast with host Chris Williamson. I urge you to check it out after this for even more and in greater detail. Generally speaking, she outlined why it is that men, being the human animal that they are, are so highly attuned to body parts of women. And that, I believe, is anthropological in nature because it's a very efficient way to keep our species going. And when we get down to the most foundational of reasons why we are here, it's to make other humans. The drive of males for sexual interaction is not necessarily higher than women's, but it generally is higher on a continuous basis than women's. On Dr. Hooven and Chris Williamson discussed a certain kind of deer, I think it's called the red deer or red antler deer, something like that. And they are a good example of mammals that are not continually ready to mate. They only mate during a season. So their testosterone level goes up and down according to that season. Whereas men, they have it continuously and are ready at any moment, most generally speaking, except for when they become fathers initially, and then it goes down. Wonderful thing in our human biology, because that's when they need to be most present for their mate and that baby to protect them and not be out with a high testosterone level looking for other females. But let's look at it in modern society. As women, we expect our men to be respectful and to understand that it is disrespectful to be looking at other women when with us. You may have had a boyfriend or you have a husband or any other man in your life that when he is with you, he doesn't keep himself from ogling other women, looking at other women, commenting on other women. And when it is a love interest, a partner, a boyfriend, a date, a husband, how do we handle it? And why does he do it? Because we immediately go to, that's not cool. And how can he not know that it's not cool? Well, there are variations on that theme. But generally speaking, if we understand this, we can have a lot more compassion, so to speak, for it. It doesn't mean we accept it, but we can feel better about it, even through having to handle it. And this is what I was alluding to when I said that Dr. Hooven gave an amazing testimony and example. She, in some form, had access 
to females transitioning to men using testosterone, of course, to get higher levels of testosterone and access to their reports of detransitioning. And this is what is truly fascinating, that men do look at body parts in a very specific way that women do not. And this is reflected in our culture. Women wear clothing that is suggestive in some way to men, shows off their female form and their more sexual apparatus, if you will. Now, we could debate whether or not breasts are sexual, but they do signal sexuality to men. And men are wired to pick up on signals in their environment in a way that women are not. This is down from the time we were in caves because men are the protectors and they must be immediately at the ready to ward off marauders, challengers, etc. Now we could say, well, they don't need to do that anymore. Well, that's true, but we haven't overcome our biology. And I dare say, should we? Again, have to be careful what we wish for because we as women generally like males to be different than us, to be male and not to be feminized. Part of this hyper awareness, which hunters, which they are, we are prey as women, need to be very heightened and aware at all times. It is why I give you all a tip. You want to make a man most comfortable on your date when you're out to dinner. Do not have him sit with his back to the door. When a man has to sit with his back to the door, he will feel very uncomfortable. And this goes back to the oldest of times when men or males would sit at the front of caves to protect those in the cave. And they would take turns and not, you know, allowing all the other males to sleep while they sat watch. If a man cannot be looking into his environment for possible challenges or unsafe things happening or just anything happening, he's going to feel uncomfortable because he wants to protect you. So just that little tip, change seats if he has his back to the door. Some men are very aware of this, others are not. So again, I'm going to tell you about this fascinating testosterone being given to women. And I mean at very high levels. You might even be supplementing with testosterone. Some women wear a little patch or they have it under their tongue because their levels have gotten very low. We all have a little testosterone. We have estrogen. Men have estrogen as well as testosterone, etc. But when I'm talking about transitioning to a male, women are given a great amount of testosterone. And here's what happens that if you understand this, you will have more understanding, certainly, and maybe even a little empathy for your man or men who look at other women or have maybe behaved a little badly. And then we will talk about how to handle it when that does happen. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be, because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 80-20 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, Relationship Evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. 
So women who have transitioned talk about a number of things, according to Dr. Hooven, that were great about it and a couple of things that weren't so great. One thing that was great was the higher dopamine levels and feeling more omnipotent, so to speak, greater control, etc. All reported, however, a much higher libido and interest in sex vis-a-vis looking at and being distracted by whomever their interest was in, whether it was men or women, but body parts. Unlike when they were women, where it was the whole of the person to whom they were attracted and the level of interaction and co-interaction with that interest. So Dr. Hooven had a very interesting dream when she was writing her book. I find it really telling and so illustrative of the male experience. She did not say whether she finds females attractive or not. Uh, She has her own child. I don't know what her sexual orientation is at all, but she discussed a dream she had when writing this book, again, about males and what happens to them with testosterone. So in her dream, she stated that she was with a female she didn't know, and she was talking to this female, and she had sexual desire for her, but vis-a-vis her body parts, not the whole of her, whether it was her breasts, whatever it was. And she said that in the dream, it was overwhelming how she wanted to touch her and get to her body parts. But the woman herself was keeping her from that, meaning she was the barrier to Dr. Hooven being satisfied by being able to touch her. And she said she woke up and went, oh my God, I have had an experience of what it is like to be male. And on this particular podcast that I was listening to with Chris Williamson, he said, I couldn't put it better. That is the male experience. Now for us, that can be both interesting and terribly disheartening because we desire to be so much more than our parts to any man. And the thing is, we can be. That's why you're here to understand more about how that can happen when you are interested in a man. The beauty is you can guide his experience to want you for more than that, more than just your parts. Absolutely. And yes, it kind of sucks that out in the world, walking around, men will look at your body parts. Let's look at the flip side of that. That without that, we wouldn't be allowing men to be the human animal that they are and then all the good that comes from that. Once a man loves, he has abilities, he can stop behavior that you find distasteful or disrespectful. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Tips for how to handle it, how to stop it. First and foremost, we do not want to demonize it. Dr. Hooven discussed other things that happened for the females that transitioned to male and then back through having very high testosterone given to them and then cutting all the way back on it. Not surprisingly, orgasms were affected in a very unique way. And most all of the women reported that as females without the high level of male testosterone, their orgasms were longer lasting, more involved the entire person, not just localized. And for males, they don't have that experience. It is a more localized and not full-bodied experience. So hey, great. Let's look at all the positives. Testosterone varies during the life cycle and during involvements and social, familial interaction. For example, like I said, when a man has a baby, generally testosterone will drop. This is so useful during that period to keep him more focused on what's at hand in his life. All of us being biological beings, when men are in the presence of fertile women, really interesting studies about, for example, they had men 
without looking at faces, without anything else, just looking at videos of certain women's walking and found that they were most attracted, without seeing anything else, to the women walking who were fertile at the time of the video being taken. That's just innate that no one could account for. Stuff like that. And if this triggers you in any way because you are anxious about a man's cheating, fearful of men cheating, being cheated on, etc. You can break that for yourself through all the work that we talk about here in terms of raising your own self-concept, knowing that good men do not cheat on their wives or women to any great or greater degree than the opposite, meaning women cheating on men. It may seem like that, but statistically, with the surveys done, it's, like I said, not much of a difference. While love alone does not a relationship make, once a man loves and is ready, willing, and able to commit, he will not be solely driven by that testosterone, but he may still have innate behaviors from being single and not being made aware of his way of being in his environment that is highly attuned to looking at females and being aware of their presence. And that can be construed as disrespectful, jerky, whatever. How do we handle it? First and foremost, we want to make him aware in a way that is not about us. In other words, if you know from a discussion like this, reading books on it, listening to podcasts and scientists, doctors, specialists, experts, how important it is not to impugn a man for his nature, we can make that man aware of it in a lighter way that still speaks to how important it is for us. It's kind of like in a first incident, if you have this, went out with a man, think about the old adage, if you can't beat him, join him. For example, you're out on a date and some woman comes into his sight path and you immediately see on the man's face the change and his eyes. Maybe his eyes go up and down her. Maybe he follows her and can't help himself. You want to bring it to his attention for a couple of reasons. A, you're going to need to correct the behavior so that if he is aware, you have to make it known that that's not cool, again, in a fun and flirty way, because that's going to be important that he knows you value yourself in a way that doesn't allow for that. So making it light whenever possible like, for example, waving your hand in front of his eye if his eyes have glazed over. Like, hello, yes, she's very pretty, but I'm over here and we're on a date. Depending on the guy, he may not even be aware of it. I remember years ago when I first married my first husband and I noticed him doing that and I did something like this. I really can't remember. I said, you know, it's really important for me as your wife for you not to do that in my presence. I know it's a natural, normal thing for you and that you've lived your young life and, you know, up until 30 doing this. But now things have changed. And just when you're with me, out of respect, I'd like you to be aware of it. And bless him, that was it. At other times, we could join each other in, wow, that woman's really beautiful. Because quite frankly, when there's anyone who's extremely attractive, male or female, we are naturally drawn to it. When you know that this is not going to mean anything about your relationship, you have the self-concept that you are okay, you are safe, you will be able to do this knowing that it's nature for the man. You're just going to nurture him out of it when around you. That's what I want you to take away today. Many men are not raised with men explaining, modeling, 
or instructing them in a way to behave with men as they were in, say, my grandmother's day. I was speaking with a client and she was discussing this issue with a date that she had with her friend's husband there. And the friend's husband said, yeah, you know, it's not cool for a man to do ogling a woman on a date or, you know, looking at her in a way that makes you uncomfortable. He said, you know, I just was taught by my dad, you have to avert your eyes. You have to practice averting your eyes when you're with a date, your wife, whatever. You have to do it, practice it. That's what good men do. Well, that man was given that modeling, that training. Many men are not, but that doesn't mean they're not good men who will stop it once they know and have been made aware of it in a kind, caring way. They may even need a couple of reminders along the way, but if you do it in a fun, even a flirty way, you will help nurture him past that nature when with you. Every guy's on a scale. He may need a few times, but if he's a good guy otherwise, and you want to be with him, and you love him, and you want to give this a chance, hey, let's try. Let's go for it. The most important thing is if it is bothersome to you in the moment to speak on it there in a fun but firm way in that moment so it doesn't fester and be bigger down the road or that you hold on to it because generally speaking, and again, like we just outlined, it's part of his nature and doesn't mean very much. So I hope this was helpful today. I trust that it was. Check out Dr. Hooven's book, her discussion on, for example, Chris Williamson's podcast, Modern Wisdom. She was also on Joe Rogan, I believe, about her book, and that was likely an interesting discussion. There's so much on this, so much written, so much done. Embracing differences, it doesn't mean that we are accepting of them when we embrace it and say, this is nature. We have things in our nature that can be niggling or bothersome or downright infuriating to men. Our ease of accessing emotions and our greater propensity for expressing those emotions verbally and men not understanding and not being equipped to handle it. Should we be impugned for that? No, but we do want to be working on ourselves always like you are if you're here to greater connect with a man through a high self-concept, mindfulness, using the mechanics of men to relate in the best way possible to have a smooth, supportive, and sexy, fulfilling relationship. That's what we're all about. And that, of course, always starts with any man by making him wonder. I trust you got a lot of great information and gained valuable insight from this real coaching conversation that you can use to help you in your romantic life. It's why this podcast exists and why there are several episodes that I choose to bring to you in their entirety, like this one. But you may not know that 98% of Make Him Wonder episodes are only partially available on YouTube and podcast listening platforms. And because I don't want you to miss out on getting the results you desire, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you get each episode in its entirety ad-free. Over 150 episodes with a real woman coming to me with a real life love situation like you just heard, all categorized by age and relationship status. So you can choose episodes that pertain to your unique situation, categories of 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, getting an ex back, situationships, dating divorced, older women, younger men, and so much more. Plus, all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. No waiting for partial episodes to drop here on YouTube or your podcast listening platform. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. Join the club monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by 
by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me personally. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you want with the man you want. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the results you desire and deserve. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's T-H-E-8020 wonder.club. You and your love will be glad you did.